Hi everybody, Creative Katie here for Index Card of Day 2017. We are on card 39 and I'm still playing with my Distress Oxides. This one's entitled, You Were Always Meant to Fly. Links to supplies can be found in the description box. Hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. So last time I had a question about whether putting it onto a gessoed surface, the distress oxides were muted in color. So what I decided to do is I took out a page in, from my Canson Mixed Media Journal and I cut tags the exact same size. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to glue this onto the flashcard after the fact or not. It's, well, kind of wait and see. So I watched a couple of videos with, that Tim Holtz did with about the distress oxides and that others did. So I have a couple more ideas. You need to press on the ink pad, press down to get the color there and if you get some color from another one on it you can just clean it off. Tim says it's not a huge problem. So the brown there is regular distress ink and I also found out that it's perfectly okay to blend those together. So once you get your first one you need to dry you can always come back in. I think that's something he warned us about that, you know, you get what you get and just dry it and then go back in. So I'm using fired brick and fossil, fired brick and fossilized amber in the distress oxides. And at this stage, I really like how bright the yellow and the red are. But other than spraying it with water on the craft mat, I have not put any water. So you'll see as we progress how the colors change. So if you're trying to stress oxide as I am, and you're trying to figure out what, when you want to stop because where you get the effect you like, um, videotaping or taking pictures along the way will help you look back and um, pinpoint where you should have maybe stopped. So I'm just adding more color. And drawing in between. I'm just getting some really interesting backgrounds here. These side cads while I'm playing with my distressed oxides is really about experimenting with the di distressed oxides. It's not about the finished iCAD. I have no um, idea at this point in time where I'm going to go with it. The only thing was I said I want to try these these colors and I'm going to try a few of the techniques and things that I saw in the videos. You have to be patient with these. You you know it's a it's a kind of a back and forth. You put more ink on, put spray water, dry, dry ink, water, and vice versa. So you're playing with it very much like any of the sprays. So then I grabbed it, just a blank card there and I'm cleaning up the leftover ink. So the colors are nice. We've got some oxidization, not a lot. Tim in his videos suggested that the more water you put, the more oxidation you get. So 
So come back to the five minute mark at the end of the video and compare. Where do you like the background best? So I'm fairly happy with my background. And one of the suggestions that Tim said is when you get to that point, then you can add a little more color exactly where you want it using the blending tool. So that's what I'm getting out. And I apologize because I spent a couple hours the other day, yesterday, cleaning in my studio and I moved the camera, obviously. And so I'm finding that some of the shots, especially when I zoom in a little bit, are off camera and I will fix that hopefully before the next video. I'm just adding the fired brick and the fossilized amber a little bit here and there. And I think I also edged the, the outside. So I'm trying to drop water. I spritz in my hand and I'm dropping water droplets to get some of that effect. And, you know, it's something I got to play with more. It's not exactly my favorite. So there I'm edging and I edge with the dark red with the fire brick and then I edge. So yes, coming back 710 to look at this background before I do more things to it. So one of the things Tim did in one of his videos, he sprayed back of a stencil or the stencil with water. Now if this had a border, you have to wipe the water off the border because you don't want that solid area. So I'm just kind of cleaning up and my stencil is very wet and it actually is dripping. He said his weren't. I tried this earlier and I didn't have enough water so I didn't get the effect. So this is try to put it down and then pat it with a paper towel. So you're pushing the water into contact with the ink underneath. And so this should do the same as the water droplets but in the pattern of whatever stencil you've chosen. And then I'm just picking that up and you can see that you do get that pattern and visual texture and uh, I really liked how that turned out. So now that my background is pretty much done, what I'm thinking that it's a little too pale for me. Not sure, I may be the only one, but I'm not sure the whole completely oxidized look is for me. I like it, but I like my bright colors too. So, But because the background is muted, one of the advantages is your focal points can be um, very bright and they will stand out all the more. So I grabbed my fossilized amber in my distress crayon and I'm just scribbling it on and rubbing it in onto this paper. Um, the paper isn't, when I tried it with the distress inks to paint it, the, it peeled. The, this paper isn't intended for wet medium, but the distress crayon worked really, really well. And then for the smaller areas, I just either um, put the crayon on the, on the craft mat and used a paintbrush, or I use some ink at that point in time. Then I got out my cutting board and my X-Acto knife, and I'm just cutting out this crazy cat. I guess this whole card is brought to you by Tim Holtz. I guess the stencil wasn't his. I couldn't find, I couldn't find, I only have a couple sets of his, his stencils, but I couldn't find it. I did go to grab it. 
the stencil that I used was an Andy Skinner stencil, I believe. Snake skin. I love it. It's it's so versatile. It makes good walkways and pathways. Um, it, it's a very effective stencil in multitudes of pages. So I'm just fussy cutting this way. I find it is easier than fussy cutting with scissors. I don't know, maybe as a teacher I've, I've spent too much time cutting with scissors. So I have the crazy cat and then I had one of the crazy birds that was colored and he was just sitting in my stash. Uh, I think he's been in there for over a year. and. You know, I kind of put the two colors together and it kind of matches the colors in the background. And the, because the background is muted, they stand out. So I kind of have this cat hanging on to this bird. And for whatever reason, you know, all those quotes about, you know, your wings are ready. All you have to do is fly and all that. And I just kind of tongue in cheek thought, you know, um, I'm not sure if the crazy bird is telling the cat or the cat's telling it, telling the bird, but it says, you were always meant to fly. So I think the cat is taking taking a ride on the crazy bird. So this turned out to be quite a fun little card. And the quote there, I typed it out in just, you know, whatever font that it was, and then I select background color and select black and that's how you get the white print on black. I'm being careful with the gel medium. I don't want to reactivate and mess up any of that background. I worked really hard to get all that texture and visual interest in there. Just decide to edge the sentiment. This sentiment was not printed on sticker paper. It's just, um, it's not regular copy paper. It's heavier than that and nice and smooth. I find it, it takes well to that, a little bit of water um, and moisture. So I'm looking at his legs. The, the legs got chopped off somewhere along the, the <laughs> last year and a half that he's been in my stash and I'm just drawing them in. I was going to stamp them in and then I'm using the black pen to just outline the cat and the bird and the words. I think I, the, some, the, some of the gel medium wasn't quite dry so that was causing me a bit of trouble so I grab out the heat tool. So here, because of the amount of water in it, it is very oxidized and white. I do love the feel of, of it, but I'm, I'm kind of missing some brighter colors. So we'll see. I think I'll keep playing with it. Um, variation is good. You know, I can get bright colors with my acrylics and with the dil dilutions paint. So uh, you've got to match. the product to a style or a mood. And 
And again, I'm not using the Stabilo Oil pencil um, because I don't want to add any water because this is Distress ink and it will reactivate. So that is why I am doing kind of the sketchy outline, which is fairly new to me. I don't, I don't typically do that, but in this case, it makes the helps the focal point pop. Thinking it needs a border, so I'm doing my dash dot dot dot. Then I decide I need a little bit more framing around this, so I grab my black acrylic paint and just applying it with a felt applicator. When my felt applicators get really used up, that's when I use it for, for this purpose. They kind of graduate to a, <laughs> a less specific job. I want to do some splatters so that's the fired brick but once it got wet it really did mute it I really noticed it big time so I grabbed the fired brick that I have been just regular distressing and it's distinctly brighter so I'm just spreading that out and I grab that card that I had that I'm using to collect all the leftover ink. So I just clean that up and I want some brown. I think this is walnut stain and uh, it's just a regular distress ink. So there we have it, the finished card. I'm, I'm quite happy with the end result considering I started with Nothing more than the idea that I was going to play again with my Distress inks and try a couple other techniques with it. Stay tuned for some close-ups of the finished card and pictures of the iCAD that used all the leftover paint. I think that at doing the water on the stencil really added a lot of interest to this background. I, I really prefer that to just plain. Once again, links to the materials used will be in the description box. And we will see you for the next index card.